Hello. My name is Lisa Irie, and I'm a racist. That is to say, I recognize my prejudice, plus the power that comes with the color of my skin. I'm not so sure I would have been free to admit this up until recently. Our society ties the concept of racism so closely with overt bigotry and prejudice and the hateful things that we see happening in the world that I, I didn't want to associate myself with that. It's almost taboo to talk of one's own racism or even suggest that a white person has privilege. I have this coworker, you see, and for a six foot tall, 250 pound macho man, he sure is fragile when I make mention that he is privileged. He tries to convince me that white privilege doesn't exist and that if everyone, including people of color, worked hard and pulled their bootstraps, that they too can achieve the American dream. He makes a point to engage our entire office in these discussions and ensures that he has an opportunity to state his point of view usually well-crafted based on the latest Facebook video rant. Do you know someone like this? Yeah. A year ago, my default response to this coworker and his blithering was to put in my earbuds and tune out his nonsense. Of course, I didn't agree with him. But what was I supposed to do? Who was I? What was I supposed to say? It was far easier to pretend it wasn't happening than to have that difficult conversation. I also felt like I didn't know enough about the side of the argument I wanted to make. So I took full advantage of my privilege to be able to disconnect and turn a blind eye. Then the election happened. I realized that my typical response to these interactions would no longer be acceptable. I realized that even though it is a charged and delicate topic to breach, I can't sit back and keep wishing that someone somewhere would do something. I can't keep complaining how much I dislike the way people of color are treated in our country. This was my tipping point. So I started with me. I started exploring my own beliefs and questioning them closely especially the origins. I wanted to be a person who would feel empowered to speak out against those who were being racist. Now, I'll be the first to admit, it is not a pretty process, and there are some really hard truths to face, especially when it comes to the implicit associations test that Aaron referenced. It's also not entirely eloquent to stumble through some of these difficult conversations, but I will advocate it is worth it. Fast forward to today, and now when my coworker stirs the pot, I'm all ears and no buds, <laughs> and intentionally dismantling his uneducated, privileged perspective. And while it feels most of the time like I'm banging my head against a wall and making no progress in changing his mind, I'm hopeful that those who are overhearing our conversations, especially my white coworkers, are learning something, or at least not reporting us to HR. I know calling myself a racist can be shocking to some of you. It might have conjured an image of a white hooded figure. But because racism is systemic, all of us are impacted by it, including us white folks. We just happen to be the ones who benefit from it, and usually in ways we cannot see unless we intentionally turn our focus inward. Being racist doesn't have to mean you're a bad person. The reality is we have been conditioned by our culture, and it's naive to believe that we can exist in this culture, consuming the white supremacist messages that we are unknowingly fed and expect to come out the other side completely unaffected. This is a good reminder to myself to have compassion when speaking with those who struggle to hear the messages 
that I'm trying to say. So admitting it is my first step. I'm starting where I am as a white person who lives an unintentionally but very real segregated life in Des Moines, Iowa. My primary avenue for anti-racist work is by speaking with other white people, whether it's here at church, at work, it, at the gym, or with my friends and family to break the silence about racism. And I challenge you to examine your own racism and explore how you can confront that coworker in your life.